Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the React Context API and create a small little app like a web shop for it. And I was thinking that we could have a few items in the store. I don't know, let's say t-shirts or something. And on top of that, a little nav, nav bar to display all the items you have in the cart. So you can add, yeah, each item will have a button as well. And uh, it will display a number of items in the cart and the total price. And why this is a good example is that Maybe in the future, when you extend the app, build more pages, components, maybe you need to know the state of the cart, what the user has in the shopping cart. And instead of importing the cart component everywhere, uh, we outsource the state to the React context, like outside the app we won't keep it at the top of the app tree uh, we won't have the state at all in our components uh, it will be easier to reuse and if you have one five or hundred components that needs to know the state of the cart it will be super simple to subscribe to all the changes so let's start here i'm using stackblitz.com to quickly start a react.js project and I see they use the boilerplate has a, yeah, a custom component called hello here. And I'll delete everything. We start from scratch here. And we will be using hooks and functional components only. So here we go. And first of all, I will, yeah, get rid of the error to just display something here right so uh, h2 hello youtube so okay so i was thinking we we could create the t-shirt list we can call it the t-shirt list here first and the t-shirt list is responsible for holding a lot of t-shirt components so i want it to look like this here we want a t-shirt list component and for that we need to import it create it and um, yeah let's say i could import it first fix that t-shirt list from same folder and then t-shirt list and now it complains because we don't have it so we'll create it t-shirt list.js and as you know, we need to import React from React. And then we can create it. And we'll export t-shirt list. Whoa, what did I press? No, oh, sorry for that. And it will return for now just also maybe a, some a div and just an h2 as well list so we know we can see it yeah that's good so and this one here we will create a simple little cart nav bar later so the t-shirt list i was thinking we could yeah use a dummy api to make http request or hook it up to a database but for now i don't see any point of doing that so i'll just create an array here with like three t-shirts uh, so we mock that we have gotten everything from a database and deserialized it to a javascript object so we can name it database and that will be an array with um, let's see three objects and they will all have a name so like red t-shirt a price 10.99 and an id of one so we can copy paste this three times it goes quick one two three second one could be a yellow yeah let's say a hoodie it can be 24.99 and I have an id of two and the third one could be a blue polo 
they're called polo, right? I don't know. Uh, anyways, it's a blue polo. <laughs> so here they are. And now I hope you are all familiar with the array functions in JavaScript. Hopefully you are, because this is a context API tutorial, so you've done some JavaScript and basic React, I guess. Because um, we need to map this array to an array of like t-shirt components. And for that, we need a new component that we will create called t-shirt, and it will accept the name, price, and ID as props. So let's create that one as well and also import react from react export const t-shirt and it will uh, accept props as we said and it will return yeah we'll wrap them in a div right and um, h2 for the name so oh brackets props dot name And we can display the price as well. Maybe in a little bit smaller text for now. And you see, I won't be styling this, but um, yeah, maybe a um, horizontal ruler as well. We can have a simple line break here. And um, I think we could add a little button as well underneath, like add to cart. Let's see here. I haven't prepared anything, you know. We'll code along, see how it goes. We debug together. Uh, it feels more authentic that way. So this one has everything. We export it. We could import it now. So import t-shirt from same folder t-shirt like that and um, so here we go we'll do the mapping thing so here we will have some javascript and let's go so database we map it and for each item we will return um, a t-shirt component that accepts name we said name and that will be item.name of course price as well item.price and we need a key and that is for react to know which item that is which so a unique key and the id is perfect for that like that so Wow, it doesn't look good. Do I have too much line breaks? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not necessary. Yeah, okay. A little bit better. And um, in our, we can remove this one as well. So. So yeah, hopefully this isn't too new to you. And... Uh, if we take a look at the t-shirt, if I was too quick, it receives props and we just display it and we do nothing fancy. The button is stupid, doesn't do anything. And um, hell, we can do, it will do something later so we can uh, implement it now. So on click will use a function called add to cart. So we can create that one. Uh, let's see here, like that. And we can just console log so we know that something is happening. Um, like this. So if we bring up the console here. Yeah, looks good. So here I'll just do to do implement. Later. We'll fix that later. So, what do we have left? We have the little component up there, the cart. So, uh, 
I want a little cart here, I think. Now we get the error as well. So I'll import it. And we also need to create it. It is called cart, I said. And in the cart, let's see here, we need to import react from react and export the cart. Don't think we need any props for now. Uh, let's see here, return. What do we want to return? For now, we could use some dummy text uh, like a Bam. I, I, we, we want to know two things, I guess. Um, items in cart and uh, total price. Uh, so this will, of course, be dynamic. We can use the line break here as well. Now it is good, right? Yeah, ugly. Great. So these ones will yeah, be hooked up to the context. Um, let's see here. So now I think we've, yeah, we're ready to talk about the real context, if you're still with me. So as I said, we won't keep any big state inside these ones. We will create the context, right? So the context works like this. We will wrap our whole app with a component. They're called a provider. And that means that all the components inside of the components, all the way down, will have super easy, simple access to our cart context, as we will call it. So yeah, let's let's build that one. We can call it cart context, right? So inside here, we need to just import react again. And we need to export two things, right? The context itself that all the components will import if they're curious about what the cart state is. And also this um, provider that I said that we will wrap um, the whole app in. And you can put that on which level you want, but uh, I'll set it on top so all the components will have access to it, right? So let's jump into cart context. So the first thing is the context itself. Um, I'll explain deeper as we go. So export const cart context, and that will be react.create context. And this is it, it's super simple. We don't need anything else. So, and the next one is the provider. We can call it cart provider. So this is a React component. And this will actually accept props because, as I said, when we wrap our whole, uh, maybe I could even visualize it, put it here before, um, what did we call it? Cart provider? Yeah, so cart provider like this. So all the all the components inside here, we have access to them, of course, in our cart provider. They're in the props object as props.children. So if we just want to make a stupid little um, wrapper for them that doesn't do anything, it will look like this, right? Uh, why is it complaining? Da, 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 return props.children. Let's see here. We'll go back here. I'll import the cart provider. One second. I'll fix all the errors. I said we'll debug this <laughs> to, 
together. So we'll import cart provider and the file was called cart context, right? So same folder cart context. Uh, we'll jump into it as well. Do 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 export cart provider. Oh yeah, <laughs> we need to uh, wrap them in our uh, cart context dot provider. This is dot provider. It's on the cart context, so this will work a little bit better, I guess. Yeah. So, so now all the item, all the components inside here will have access to this context. And what what is this context? This seem, it's nothing now, right? So we want to have a state in here with all the added items. So we will the state of the cart, right? So we could create it with some hooks with use state. So const whoa const uh, cart. I don't know. Better than state and set state. So cart set cart equals use state and it will be an empty array at first. And it doesn't know what use state is, so we need to Import it as well, use date. Like that. Looks good, right? So, now, um, you might ask how, how will all these components have access to this? Because this is actual, the actual state, right? And this is the function to set a new state. And uh, to show you a quick preview, um we will need to pass a prop here uh, the value and if we set this to like a string because in here the object you set here the function you pass the string you pass this will be uh, available to all the components so to just demonstrate it quickly, uh, if I pass a string, I'm from context and we want to access this from, let's say, our cart. We will import our context, of course. Cart context from same folder, cart context, right? To use this one, it's kind of simple. Uh, we say um, um, context, we call this context value, I don't know. We use use context, symbol, right? And what do we want to use? We want to use this context. So now it doesn't know what use context is, so we need to import it, just like use state. So use context. So this is the string that hopefully will be I'm from context or what we wrote. So if we just pass it here, I don't know. Yep, yeah. I'm from context, you see? Whoa, there. And uh, if we change this to yada yada, yeah. But now we don't want to uh, pass a string, right? We want to pass the state. So you might think that we could pass um, cart. But, w I mean, the buttons will need to modify the state, right? We need to pass them both. That would be good. So we will do like this. We pass the value and also the function set cart. Whoops, like this. So we'll pass an array with two elements. And um, why is it complaining? What did I do? Maybe like this. 
hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so, so instead we will receive uh, the cart and the set cart here and the cart itself we want to know we could actually fix this right now so instead of zero we want to display the cart dot length right so if we populate the cart array the state this will change of course so we can hook these buttons up so they they will uh, push new um, elements to the cart array so we'll head back to the t-shirt and implement this one so just as in the cart we will import the context we will uh, use the context so we copy paste this one as well let's see and we need to this one as well now i'm lazy i'm copy pasting so so now we're in this this component right each of these are a t-shirt so when we press this button i want to use set cart and we want to just push a new array add a new array to the existing cart and from the start it's it has no elements so how do we do this well we're just we will just use set cart so when we press the button we set cart and now i mean we can set it to whatever we want and i we at least we need to build a, like a t-shirt object that we have like this we need to build this one up and push it in right so before we even use this function we could maybe create this item or the t-shirt right and the name will be props.name and the price will be props.price and i don't know for the id i don't think we will need it right not now at least we can keep it simple but we could always yeah add an id or something um <laughs> So, so now we have the t-shirt that we're in, we created the object and now we could push it to the existing cart array. But what is the cart array? Well, when we set it, instead of setting it to something in here, we could access the current state. So current cart, we name it what you want, I'll call it cur. Uh, and that is the current state so we want to copy the current state and just push the element and for that we will use some ES6 array destructuring here so what this means this little expression is we're cloning the array we're making a copy of it and all the array state will just be yeah destructured beside each other all the elements and as a last element here i will add the t-shirt like this so hopefully you're familiar with this syntax right and now i think this should work we could try it out so let's see if we press this one yeah, increments good, right? We haven't fixed the total price. It's a dummy zero for now. So we could uh, uh, implement that one as well. So we'll head back to cart, it's called, right? This shouldn't be a zero. Um, the total price, I don't know, how could we calculate that? We could, we could use the reduce function if you're familiar so we can create const a 
a variable to print total price and that will be cart.reduce let's see if I even remembered it it's we get an um, it, it expects two values the function the reduce function and an initial value so let's see here um, and for that we will get uh, accumulator and the current and we just want what do we want we will just need to add the current to the accumulator so cur. if this seems a little bit strange now I, I'll explain it I just need to write the function up uh, it's super handy and um, Let's see if it works and I'll explain total price. Now cur, uh, dot price, you see? Okay, so, oh, <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, w what this function is, you could check it out, just Google uh, array reduce on MDM um, but what it does it you pass the initial value right so on an array it you can reduce it to one element one item so if you have a uh, hundred elements in an array like this and you want to calculate the total of, 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 of something sorry um, you this is the thing right you have access to the accumulator I mean the total or, or what we will call it and the current item in the array uh, and for each one we increase the accumulator with the current item dot price and we want to start with zero we could start with 100 right so you see here total price 100 and we will just um, yeah so reduce filter map for each they're all super handy when working with javascript and especially react so and this is it right everything works so maybe we could just wrap it up quickly so we'll take a look at the start so we, we're wrapping everything with our provider we'll look into it soon hopefully the t-shirt list and t-shirts are kind of straightforward right the t-shirt list we mocked this database response and uh, we're just mapping each item to a t-shirt component and the t-shirt itself it accepts the props we print them out here and we have a button uh, that um, fires this function called add to cart uh, and the add to cart what it does is it creates an object with two keys name and price and we're using the props so if we press this button here we use uh, the name and the price to yeah create the t-shirt object and then uh, we used the context up here so we have access to the state and also the set state function and here we're using the set state so we have access to the current state we can call it current state maybe it's easier to understand current state uh, and we're destructuring it, it so we copy the whole array keep it as it is and just add a new uh, element the t-shirt here and what do we have more we have the context right that's left so this one is a little bit tricky but remember it's two things it's the context itself one-liner nothing 
fancy and it's we're using it here so there, there, there's the magic uh, uh, we're using the provider here and wrapping the whole app the whole app is literally in here um, and we're passing down the value uh, of these two so we're passing the state and the set state uh, functions down so whichever component can if they want set the state or access the state and here lies the state of the whole context the whole app for now and we can have multiple contexts i mean I f first I thought we could have two contexts, right? One for the cart and maybe another one called the uh, shopping list context. And that one holds all this little array. So everyone could read from that. If we build more um, components, maybe there's other pages in the app that wants to know what items do we have in the store. So that would be also good to have a context for that so if we create two three four contexts well we head back to the index.js and we keep adding another context like a shopping list context like this And we can maybe have a context for theming if we want light or dark theme. Super simple. Just copy the pattern that we have used. And uh, yeah, the theme, it's just a boolean, true or false, if it's dark or not, you know. So uh, yeah, before going to Redux, I think it's a good start to play around with the context API uh, before going further but you see you maybe you don't even need Redux I mean I haven't used it too much as well uh, I'm happy with the context so and that's everything for this and this is my first tutorial um, and hopefully I'll produce some more in the future uh, you could comment if you want to know something else, right? Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good time. Bye.